People keep asking me how I've been doing since my little accident back in July. I smile and tell them I'm fine, but that's not entirely true. I'll start at the beginning. I don't do so well when I get my blood taken. Back in July, I was at the doctor's office for a physical, and they took some blood. And while I was waiting at the front desk to get my parking validated, I fainted and hit my head on the floor. I was a little bit dizzy, but other than that, I was fine. I went home, went to bed, and went to work the next day. That went fine. I live in Los Angeles, and I have a fairly long commute, usually 45 minutes to an hour. About halfway home, I drive through a tunnel in the Sepulveda Pass, and there's absolutely no place to pull over. When my vision starts getting spotty, my throat constricts, my ears fill up with a wave-like roaring, my hands and my legs begin to shake, I'm blacking out. I pull over the first chance I get and limp my way home, driving in the slow lane and pulling into parking lots all the way back to Woodland Hills where I live. The next morning I try driving to work and the same thing happens. I stay home for a week. And every day I get a little worse. Now I'm dizzy all the time. I keep getting headaches. I can't eat. I try to watch TV, but my vision's still blurry. I start sleeping 12, 15, 18 hours a day. And now it's not just driving. If I go outside, I get dizzy. If someone calls or an airplane flies by, I get dizzy. 20 times a day, I almost pass out. My wife takes me to the emergency room. I get a CAT scan. It comes out fine. The emergency room sends me to a neurologist. They do more tests. They also come out fine. The neurologist prescribes drugs. I read the side effects. Dizziness, shortness of breath, headaches, diarrhea, constipation, irritability, confusion, vomiting up black coffee ground-like substances. The label on the bottle says, for severe anxiety. I decide not to take the drugs. I go on the internet. I learn a new phrase, panic attack. I have all the symptoms. I start to wonder if this is all my imagination. Am I making myself sick? After another week, I've used up all my sick days and my wife drives me to work. This is a bad idea. I spend most of the day under my desk. I go back home, start using my vacation days, and continue calling in sick. I'm getting worse. I can't sleep. I can't eat. I can't watch TV. I can't shit. I keep thinking there's spiders in the bed. I become briefly convinced that the house is haunted, but I'm afraid to leave. I start making impulse purchases. I buy camera lenses and old zombie movies on eBay. I order a humidor and $150 worth of cigars from a catalog. I buy $400 worth of Ugandan death masks from the home shopping network. I buy crap. Crap, 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 crap. I start looking at porn on the internet. It's not even good porn. I just type dirty words into my browser to see what comes up. I feel like I'm losing my mind. September 11th happens, and I am in absolutely no condition to deal with it. I wake my wife up in the middle of the night. I smell poison gas. I hear an airplane crashing. There's someone speaking Arabic in our backyard. I start buying guns. I buy a gas mask. I buy a hazmat suit. I'm in the process of buying a Geiger counter when our MasterCard bill arrives. I'm in trouble. My wife has been extremely supportive and understanding during the past 11 weeks, but she's starting to lose her patience. She wants me to get help, professional help. I refuse. I tell her I'm getting better, and to prove it, I agree to go back to work. I have a job in middle management supervising computer technicians at a successful family-themed cable network. 
I have a nice office, a steady paycheck, and a pretty girl who answers my phone. I've been there eight years. But my office faces the Los Angeles International Airport. And now I spend day after day staring out the window, watching the planes come and go, convinced that each and every one is going to crash into a building. The company I work for is purchased by an even larger family-themed entertainment corporation, and we're warned that layoffs are imminent. I seek deeper into depression and in paranoia. At home, I wake up late at night with chest pains and a tingling sensation in my arms and legs. I keep gagging for no good reason. I have terrible bouts of gas that last for days on end. I begin having out-of-body experiences, drifting away from myself, blacking out and waking up hours later with no memory of where I've been or what I've done. One day, my wife discovers that most of the kitchen knives are missing. I have absolutely no idea where they are. It's Saturday, October 22nd. My wife is out shopping. I'm sitting on the toilet, farting, dizzy, nauseous, and about to black out when I get a visit from the devil. He's come to tell me that I'm the Antichrist. Satan tells me that over the next five years, I will rise from virtual obscurity to a position of international power and influence. And on October 1st, 2006, I will be named president of the newly formed Global Alliance of Nations. Following my appointment, I will embark on a systematic 10-year crusade to kill all Jews and Christians, a campaign that will ultimately result in the deaths of nearly two-thirds of the world's population and the complete destruction of Europe and North America. I ask Satan for proof that I'm not imagining this. He replies with a Bible verse, Revelations 13:18. If anyone has insight, let him calculate the number of the beast, for it is a man's number, and the number of his name shall be 666. 666, six letters in each name, like in Thomas Andrew Putnam. I black out. When I wake up, I make my biggest mistake yet. I call my parents and I tell them what's happening. Although I leave out the part about the guns, the pornography, and me being the Antichrist. My mother isn't surprised. She explains that my father and brother both suffer from panic attacks. They've had them for years. They're so severe, in fact, that like me, they have trouble driving, going into tall buildings, and being around large crowds. And, she says, like them, I may never get better. This is the most terrifying thing I have ever heard. I hang up the phone, get in my car, and drive to work by myself. I do not pass out. I do not crash. I do not die. I make it. It's now December. Six months have passed since I hit my head. I'm driving to work on my own, although I still get nervous around crowds and on the freeway. I still have the prescription bottle for severe anxiety in my backpack, but all the pills are still there. My MasterCard is almost paid off. I still have my job. I'm getting my wife some new knives for Christmas. I almost feel normal. 